kind of thing often? Brains? No. Although Walter gets particularly excited whenever we do. Hmm. Look at that. Oh, I'm out. Hey, I've got Walter for you. Filament. What kind of filament? Hold on a second, fellas. Mind if I take a look at it? Some kind of little computer chip embedded in his midbrain. Thalamus. Yes, that would make sense. Well done, son. Hold up, Walter. Agent Dunham! Excuse me. What does that do? Hmm? The thalamus? Why is it relevant? It's the part of the brain that regulates sleep. What are you looking for? That. Both victims had been surgically implanted. It's a biochip, technically a brain-computer interface, or BCI. This particular chip has a transmitter which makes it wireless. So it can connect the brain to a remote computer? That's right. From what we can ascertain, we think it works a lot like a pacemaker. It monitors sleep cycles and, when necessary, stimulates the thalamus, which induces a deeper sleep state. Thank you. This is not hypnosis, it is mind control. There's a difference? Yeah, yes, P Peter was right. Hypnosis can only go so far, suggesting but not forcing behavior. Look, look, look. look. Hematomas on the brain matter, indicating actual trauma, the result of conflicting neural impulses, um, a conflict of mind and body. Is that what killed them? Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> the bullet took care of that. No. But. Mind control could cause brain damage. I, I theorize that the power operates through the cochlear nerve. You mean sound? Yes. A, an auditory trance is a far more effective path manipulation than the other senses. But again, it's, it's just hypothesis. idea of starting to implant this technology internally and really you know taking it the next step what'll be the good and the bad of that you know all of these potential human interface you know human computer interfaces are coming it's just a question of what are the violations to you what are the violations you think privacy is bad with you know web you know when actually they know it. Yeah. I know you're on the john what who is this it's a friend it's Colonel Simmons, Timmy. Get off the girl, you know. Those are the uh, scary parts of the next generation of technology. If, if you're afraid now, be very afraid.
sensors woven into our clothing, embedded into our bodies. We will carry multiple devices and they will talk to each other. TVs, computer monitors, MP3 players, internet devices. Displays surround us. How about one display? One you can wear right on your eye. The goal we have is to incorporate electronic devices onto a contact lens to make it a lot more sophisticated. Dr. Babak Parviz is a man with a vision that soon you'll be able to surf the internet on a transparent screen mounted directly on the surface of your eye. He's creating the smart contact lens. You can imagine a variety of applications for a display that's directly constructed onto a lens that you can pop into your eye. A wirelessly connected computer on your contact lens will change your life. I think we'll take several steps towards a more immersive experience of technology. And we'll start by what is called augmented reality, which is an ability to overlay the virtual world onto the real world. But is it really possible to build a screen right on your eye? We have been able to incorporate all the metallic interconnects that you need to make a circuit. So you could have a digital contact lens that connects wirelessly to outside devices within the next 30 years. Everything will be connected. And when I say everything, I mean everything.